my, someone dies, whatever he is, beautiful, ugly, all that human existence contained in that person, and he dies, which is inevitable. And I look at that person, I've lived with that person, I've been I, I love that person, and that person dies. I am in <coughs> error, right? Yes. Why? Why am I in a terrible state, anguish, tears, desperate loneliness? Why am I in sorrow? I am not. We are not discussing this intellectually. No. No. I am talking about much more seriously. Why should I? I've lost that person. It's been dear to me, companion, all the rest of it. And here comes to an end. I think it's really important to understand the ending. The ending, because I, there is something totally new when there is an ending to everything. No, that is why I asked. You cannot ask the why of it. No, uh, why is merely put as a because inquiry. No, but isn't it inevitable? He that was the perfume of my existence. Yes. I Jesus. loved him. I loved him. Yes. He was my companion, sexually, from all the rest of it. He and in whom I I I felt full, rich. Yes. And that person comes to an end. Right? Isn't it so? It is. My son dies, or my brother dies. It's a tremendous sorrow. Yes. I shed tears and anxiety, and my mind then says, "I must find comfort," and invents the idea that I'll meet him next life, and all that stuff begins. Now, I'm asking myself, why? Man carries this sorrow with him. I know it is sorrowful, I know it is devastating. It is as though the whole existence has been uprooted. It is like a marvellous tree torn down in an instant, cut down in an instant. That has happened. I think I'm in sorrow because I've never really understood deeply what is ending. I've lived forty, fifty-eight years. During those periods, period, I have never realized the meaning of ending. You I understand. The ending. Putting an end to something which I hold dear. I mean, my say for instance, totally ending belief, totally ending attachment, the ending of it, not. The ending of it, in order to continue in another direction. What makes the mind capable, capable of ending? Of ending. It is a question which. I fear, of course. 
example. I'm just taking a very ordinary example, which is common to all of us. To end completely without any motive and direction, attachment. with all its complexity, with all its implications, to have no attachment to any, to your experience, to your memory, to your knowledge. That's what will happen when death comes. After all, Ending to knowledge. And that's what I'm clinging to, when he's clinging to. The knowledge that that person dies. I've lived with him, I've cherished him, I've looked after him. We have been tremendously compared. All that, the beauty and the conflict and all that's involved. And to, and to end totally, absolutely, to the memory of all that. That is death, right? That's what's going to happen when my son, brother, wife, husband dies, mother. Is there, you have often said, learn, uh, living enter the house of death. Yes. You have used that phrase. What is exactly meant by it? Yes, I have done it. And what I is meant by it? Meant by that, to invite death while living. Not commit suicide, but I'm not talking about that. Or take a pill. An exit. <laughs> I'm talking of ending. I I think it's very important that the not only the word itself contains an all a depth of meaning. The ending of something. The ending of a memory. I'm taking that as a simple example. The memory of an experience which I have cherished, held on, hold on to, something that has given me a great delight, a sense of depth and well-being. And to that memory I cling. And I and I'm living in that memory though I'm do ordinary work and go to the office or whatever it is, but that memory is so endearing, so extraordinarily vital, I hold on to it. And therefore, I never find out what it means to end. I think there is a great deal in that, at least I feel. The great deal in the sense of ending every day, everything that you have psychologically gathered. Attachment you can end. That is the end. That is death. That is not death. What would you call death? The organism coming to an end? Death. Or the image that I have built about you? You see, when you reduce it to that, I will say the image which you have built about you. But it is much more than that. Oh, what is much more than that? There is, of course, much more than much that. More. But I am just inquiring to it. There is much more than that. that is, I've lived with you, cherished you, and all the rest of it. And the image of you is deeply 
rooted in you. Yes. And <coughs> I'm not talking about you die, and that image becomes gathers greater strength naturally. Yes. I. I, I put flowers to it, give poetic uh, words to it, and all that. But it's the image that is living. And I'm talking about the ending of that image. Sir, if because I cannot, the mind cannot enter into a totally new dimension. If there is a shadow of memory of anything, because that is timeless, that is eternal. And if I come, if I, if the if the mind is to enter into that, it mustn't be have. The any element of time in it. I think this is logical, rational, and what is it we object to? 